I've spent over two years here on YouTube and elsewhere trying to sound the alarm, trying to wake people up as to what's happening in the English Channel. I've exposed the French Navy escorting vessels over. I predicted huge numbers would come. I went out and showed how hotels all around the country are being filled up and being used. And I also talked again and again about the fact that 90% of those that come are male, 70% are young male, and virtually all of them are undocumented. I even managed to film mobile phones and documents being thrown into the English Channel. And again and again from government we get, we're dealing with the problem. We're dealing with the problem, whether it's the Rwanda plan or whatever else it is. I've made it clear from the start that if we stay part of the ECHR, there will never be a solution. But what has emerged in the last 24 hours surpasses every single worst fear I've had. And this is not the fault of the European court, the French Navy or anybody else. It's the fault of us, the British government, and in particular, the Home Office. The Inspector of Borders produced a report back in February of this year. February, bear that in mind. That report showed some of those that come in have with them guns, have with them knives, other dangerous weapons. But even more serious than that, it showed that of those that are sent off to hotels, large numbers just abscond. And of those that have absconded, up to two thirds of them haven't even had any biometric data of any kind taken. So just think it through. Groups of young men cross the English Channel, are taken in with the British authorities, disappear. Not only do we not have any documents for them, we don't even have any fingerprints or any record whatsoever of who they are. Now, in the last few days, mercifully, one particular man has been identified and sent back to Austria, where he faces charges of the rape and murder of a 13 year old. So I suppose it's good that he's gone. But how many more people who are wholly undocumented that have come into Britain and have disappeared? How many more are simply fleeing justice because of crimes they've committed elsewhere? I don't know the answer to that. You don't know the answer to that. How many of those that have come believe in the ISIS ideology and could pose us with a terrorist threat in the years to come? Again, I don't know the answer. And even if it's 1%, that's 1% too many. And the most extraordinary thing of this story is there's no debate about it in the Tory leadership contest. Neither Rishi Sunak nor Liz Truss want to discuss either the huge level, record levels of legal immigration or the huge numbers of illegal immigrants coming into Britain. It's not even being discussed. As soon as Suella Braverman was out of the race, it stopped even being talked about. And worse still, in today's national press, there are conservative supporting newspapers who aren't even covering this story. They are complicit with the government in covering this up. I mean, frankly, I think this should be called an emergency. Huge numbers of undocumented young men coming into this country, disappearing. We don't even know who they are. This conservative government, this home office are now a threat to our national security. It's an almost unbelievable situation. It's worse than anything I could have dreamt of over these two and a half now years that I've been following this, campaigning on this, sounding the alarm. So we need to reach the end game, I think, with our politicians. And it doesn't matter actually now whether they're Labour, Liberal Democrat, uh, Conservative, whatever they are. Surely the threat is as clear to you as it is to me. We now need to tell our politicians that unless they're going to sort this out, we will not ever vote for them again. It's the only language they understand. In the end, it's how we got a referendum on Brexit. They fear losing votes. They fear losing their seats. They need to know that the safety of our children on the streets, the safety of us, the integrity of our society, that we are prepared to fight back and to defend it, even if they choose to brush it under the carpet and their friends in the media too. We really must take a stand. This is just way worse than I could ever have imagined. Thank you for watching this video. Now, to make sure you don't miss any future videos, please click the subscribe icon 
and the notification bell. Until next time, when I give you another story that mainstream media dare not cover.